Hey, ya sassy crew. Big run has started and we are all tasked to reach 700 million golden eggs together. Okay, so 700 million? That sounds ridiculous, right? Well, I honestly think we can do this pretty easily. But maybe you are still demotivated because you think that your impact is minimal and that we won't reach a super high number anyway. Well, Foreman, let me tell you that unlike Splatfest, your contribution is more important. Okay, so postscript Yariko here. Uh, we reached the goal. Yeah, we reached the 700 million already. However, they increased it for extra scales. It's 800 million now. So maybe they will increase it once more in the future? Well, we do get more gold scales if they do. In this video, I will mainly talk about what you, as an individual, or, you know, your little group that you're playing with, can do to get more eggs. These are small tips that aren't as complicated as some of the advanced Zen and strategies floating around, but they still impact the game in a large scale. Hey, um, small update real quick. We did get the 800 million golden eggs. So now the goal is 900 million golden eggs. So just in general, try to get as many eggs as possible. We do not know for how much longer this is going to go on. So j just try your best. <laughs> Anyways, in case you're still worried about reaching a high individual account or a high individual account average, there are multiple factors that make such a number possible. There are also some special aspects in this big run that haven't existed in any rotation or big run before. I will talk about some points in detail right after. Anyway, so what makes the high account possible is for one, the good stage layout and the boss bonds, so as with most of the big run stages, the grand festival bowl is small enough in its relation between the boss spawn points as well as the egg basket or in this case also the egg cannons, that it will be easier to get more eggs into the basket fast. So as an example, think about those stinger spots on spawning grounds, Marinier's Bay or Bone Rattle Arena, compared to, you know, the grand festival venue. There's a lot less ground to cover until you get back to the basket or to the cannon, meaning more eggs in total and faster boss kills. And yes, there are also the egg cannons as well as the goldie spawns and they will be covered in detail right now. The question is, how can you improve your average egg scores in this big run? The most important part is to take advantage of the egg cannons. The egg cannons are special to this big run. These things are a huge deal. With them, you can get more eggs into the basket without a lot of flurry. Whenever activated, these cannons shoot the egg close to the basket. That means that the boss spawns don't really matter as much, as long as you can reliably control the crowd. With those things, you barely have to move in order to get the eggs into the basket. In return, they save a ton of time. To use these cannons effectively, it is best to lead or lure the bosses to a cannon or basket and then either shoot or deposit. It won't take long either, since there are cannons at almost all possible boss locations. These eggs then land at the basket to be picked up later or right away by their teammate. By the way, did you know? The far cannons work like big shot cannons, so the extra scatter all around. But the close cannons, like those that are very close to the basket, always have the eggs land inside. So don't underestimate those. The second most important thing to pay attention to is to use the goldies to boost your score together with flurry. New to this big run is that normal day waves have goldies in them just like the fog waves. These goldies can drop one, five, or even a whole ten eggs. In order to get all the eggs, you need to lure those goldies to the basket or to the cannon. They will boost your score dramatically. So try to keep a lookout for them. And also please, do not just kill the goldies anywhere. 
you will struggle with getting all the eggs since there will be enough stuff in this big run or in a big run way for you to do. You should also be aware of your weapon roll, but you should still watch out for all the general things like eggs, paint, lassos, bosses, etc. Depending on what you think your team needs at that particular time, you should also be aware of the strength or the role of your weapon. That means that you see what your weapon is good at and what it struggles with. You can generally see this by playing the weapon at that moment. For example, the Grisco Roller is very fast and can steamroll anything that is on the ground. As long as it's not armored, of course. Thus, it is your duty to take care of lessers. You're also there to provide a path for your team. However, you will struggle against fish sticks and steelheads. Grisco Slosher, on the other hand, can pierce bosses, so any flyfish, steelhead, drizzler, grillers, etc., they can be shredded very easily. The weapon also pierces through rows of lessers. However, here you need to pay a lot of attention to your ink consumption, otherwise you're going to be in a lot of trouble. But in order to score a high egg count, you need to survive as much as possible. Even though you can be revived by your teammates, each death not only takes time, which could be invested in killing or collecting instead, but your teammates also might have to give up their important position or their resources to revive you. It's even worse if you have one of the stronger weapons like Grisco Chargers, Grisco Sloshers, Patana, Roller, because then you're not gonna be there to do the crowd clearing. So it is recommended that you only confront things you're pretty sure you're going to survive. This is better than dying in a risky way. Next on the list is to watch out for snatchers. Snatchers are not as much of an important factor in this big run due to the cannons, but you can still use them. So snatchers are not only just there to take your eggs away, they can be a pretty useful tool that can save you seconds. That means you can let some snatchers live on purpose. To take advantage of the snatchers, you first have to know where they come from. Snatchers spawn in areas that are different each wave. When you see eggs laying around, look around to see where the snatchers are coming from. They fly in a straight line from their spawn to the egg meaning some lines end up above or near the basket. If you kill them there, they have the eggs land right where you want them to. And in the meantime, you can just do something else. Just don't forget to actually kill the snatcher once it flies over the basket with the eggs. Now to crop control and especially the bosses. You need to pay attention and kill the bosses at the right time and at the right place. So you can lure moss or scrapper close to the basket or the cannons almost all the time. Although sometimes, for example, when your team is in danger and they're all getting overwhelmed, you don't really need to just wait for these two bosses, then you can just kill them immediately so you can help your team out on, I don't know, the different side of the map. Also, danger, 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 get stingers and fly fish ASAP. Do not wait or expect someone else to do it. If you can't reach them and they become dangerous, just use a special if that particular special can reach them. Also, there are some other priority bosses such as steelheads, you know, big explosion and big paint. That's not good. Fish sticks. Yeah, you might underestimate them, but that paint gets really annoying, especially when you have a Grisco Slosher or something like that. Lids can block all your shots, so you don't necessarily need to kill them, you can just have them drop down. They can be really useful there as well, but just make sure to keep them in mind. And on high tide steel, you also also a massive issue. Normal waves, or basically all the waves, Drizzler torpedoes. Shoot them down, you don't necessarily need to kill the dresser, just shoot the torpedoes. And now for the last tip, which should not be underestimated, even if it's just Grisco weapons. 
because you need to use your specials. Got the bad weapon? <coughs> oh. <coughs> or you see your team struggling? Use your special to avoid danger. Some specials like Strikes or Veil can pierce far bosses while others like Kraken or Wavebreaker are good for long-term crowd control. However, compared to the Grisco weapons, these specials are sometimes weaker. For example, when you have a Grisco Slasher and a Crab as a special. You know, the Crab doesn't really do it for you in most situations, as the Slasher can just easily take care of bosses, lessers itself, and with the Crab, you can throw eggs. Not good. It is important that you see when and if a special is worth it. Just don't be afraid to use it before way free. What counts is that you get through the round as smoothly as possible. Alright, these are the six major tips I can give you for this big run. The most important ones are learning to cannon the basket, you know, especially with the Goldie, using your Grisco weapon at the fullest potential, and, you know, trying to survive, specifically in freelance, but also in your normal groups. Let's get that big run score as high as possible, since they seem to keep raising the goalpost. Now it's at 900 and million gold next, and we are probably gonna reach it, like, in a few minutes. And, you know, we all want the scales, don't we? Each contribution counts, so I wish you best of luck with your big run games, and let me know in the comments how it's going for you. Also, if you like this video, you know, maybe give me a like and subscribe. I also have my socials linked in the description. And yes, thank you everyone, see ya!